Practical Research 1. Preparing for your oral presentation. In some classes, writing the research paper is only part of what is required in regards to presenting your work. Your teacher or instructor or when you get into college, your professor may also require you to also give an oral presentation about your study. Here are some things to think about before you are scheduled to give a presentation. Number one, what should you say? If your professor or your teacher, your instruction, has not explicitly stated what the content of your presentation you should focus on, think about what you want to achieve and what you consider to be the most important things that members of the audiences should know about your study. So what would you want to convey what your audience should know about your studies or study? Think about the following. Do I want to inform my audience? Do I want to ins uh, inspire them to think about my research or convince them of a particular point of view? These questions will help you uh, frame how to approach your presentation topic. Number two, oral communication is different from written communication. What I have uh, asked you to do in writing research paper, of course, you will know, notice it's about written form. It's a written thing. It's a written communication. Your audience has just one chance to hear you talk. Just one chance to hear you. They can't reread your words if they get confused. Focus on being clear, particularly if the audience can't ask questions during the talk we have what we call the panelists when you are um presenting your research oral presentation of your of your research but it doesn't mean that the audience will ask you question because it is the panelist job to ask you questions there are two well-known ways to communicate your points effectively number one is you have to do it simple please just keep it simple Focus your presentation on getting two to three key points across. The second approach is to repeat key insight. You have to tell them or your audience what you uh, what you are going to tell them. You it's some kind of forecasting. Um, tell them or explain to them, and then tell them what you just told them. So forecast, explain, and summarize. Third, you have to think about your audience. Yes, you want to demonstrate to your teacher, instructor that you have conducted a good study. But teachers often ask students to give an oral presentation to practice the art of communicating and to learn to speak clearly and audibly about yourself and your research or your study. Questions to think about include what background knowledge do they have about my topic or your topic? Does the audience have any particular interest? Or you can ask, how am I going to involve them in my presentation? You have to ask yourself about those uh, questions. Fourth, you have to create effective notes. If you don't have notes to refer to as you speak, you run the risk of forgetting something in important. Also, having no notes increases the chance you lose your train of thought and begin relying on reading from the presentation slides. You have to bring a notes, a jot down of notes or a collection of notes from the research or, or study that you have conducted. Think about the best ways to create notes that can be easily referred to you as you speak. This is important. Nothing is more distracting to an audience than the speaker fumbling around with notes as they try to speak. You have to have an organizer or your notes should be organized when you are speaking as well. Why? Because it gives the impression of being organized and prepared. So as much as possible, do not show to the audience, to your teacher or instructor that you have a, a disorganized or unprepared presentation. 
A good strategy is to have a page of notes for each slide so that the act of repa repairing to a new page helps remind you to move to the next slide. This also will um, create a natural pause that allows your audience to contemplate or reflect what you just presented or what you have just presented. There are some good strategy uh, to create effective notes for yourself. Uh, let's have it here. Number one, you have to choose large, a readable font, at least 18 point uh, or font size. Avoid using fancy text fonts or cursive text when you are using your notes. Use bold text, underlining or underlined text, or different color text to highlight elements of your speech or your presentation that you want to emphasize while doing your oral presentation do not overdo it okay so you will have to use bold text underline or different uh color text but please do not overdo it only highlight the most important elements of your presentation um third you have to leave an adequate space on your notes to jot down additional thoughts or observation before and during your presentation this will also help helpful when writing down your thoughts in response to a question or to remember a multi-part question. Uh, next is you have to place a cue in the text of your notes to indicate when to move to the next slide if you are using the PowerPoint presentation or to click on a link or to take some other actions such as linking to a video. Um, if appropriate, include a cue in your notes if there is a point during your presentation when you want the audience to refer to a handout. If you will be giving a handout. Uh, lastly, you have to spell out challenging words phonetically and practice saying them ahead of time. Sometimes you are running with your notes and at the same time you, you, you do not know how to pronounce the words. So it is much better you, you have to spell out challenging words phonetically and pra practice saying them ahead of time. This is particularly important for accurately pronouncing people's names, technical or scientific terminology, words in a foreign language, or any unfamiliar word. Is it important to organize your content or the content of your research or your oral presentation? Okay. How will you organize the content? Begin by thinking about what you want to achieve and how are you going to involve your audience in the presentation. So in short, you have to brainstorm, you have to organize, you have to summarize, you have to prepare, you have also to rehearse. Number one, you have to brainstorm your topic and write a rough outline. Again, brainstorm your topic and write a rough outline. Don't get carried away. Remember, you have a little amount, a limited amount of time for your presentation. Number two, you have to organize your material and draft what you want to say. Um, number three, you have to summarize your draft into key points to write on your presentation slides and uh, note cards or handouts. Number four, you have to prepare your visual aids. For example, your PowerPoint presentations, your video uh, presentation, etc. Number five, you have to rehearse your oral presentation and practice getting the presentation completed within the time limit given by your teacher. Now, you have to ask a friend also to listen and time you so you can rehearse on the dot or we can say that you have practiced it in accordance to the time given to you the general outline of your presentation should include the introduction the body and the conclusion first is your introduction it can be written last in introduction you have to capture your listeners attention Begin with a question, an amusing story, a provocative statement, or anything that will engage your audience and make them think. 
state your purpose. For example, I'm going to talk about the effects of teenage pregnancy among the students of Citrus National High School. Um, you can say also, this morning I want to explain the effects or impact of tobacco smoking among young uh, children, etc. Next is that you have to present an outline of your talk. Again, you have to present an outline of your talk. For example, I will concentrate on the following points. First of all, this, then this, this will lead to blah, 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 and finally, blah. That's it. Your introduction sh should be like that. Again, present an outline of your talk. Uh, let's have a recap on that. Capture your listener's attention, state your purpose, and present an outline of your talk. Second in your outline is the body. Present your main points one by one in a logical order. Uh, it can be a climactic, but please do not be uh, anticlimactic as much as possible. Pause at the end of each point. Give people um, time to take notes or time to think about what you are saying. Um, as much as possible, make it clear when you move to another point. For example, the next point is that, of course, we must not forget that the blah, 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 the point you are talking about or the coming point. Uh, you can also say, however, it is important to realize that teenage pregnancy, that should lead you to, a, uh, to another point. Okay. Use clear examples to illustrate your points and uh, key findings or key findings. If appropriate, consider using visual aids to make your presentation more interesting. For example, a map, chart, picture, or a link to a video. Lastly, in your outline, your conclusion. Leave your audience with a clear summary of everything that you have covered summarize the main points for example you can use the phrases like so in conclusion to recap the main issues in summary it is important to realize the following you have to restate the purpose of your talk and say that you have achieved your aim okay for example you have to review it your introduction what is your in intention and you have to follow it out that everything is now clear next is don't let the talk just fizzled out meaning you have to make it obvious that you have reached the end of the presentation lastly you have to thank the audience and invite questions for example you have to say thank you are there any questions that that is very basic in an oral presentation uh you have to take note that when when your audience is asking or when you are asking your audience if anyone has any questions give people time to contemplate what you have said and to formulate a question it may seem like an awkward pose to wait 10 seconds or so for someone to raise their hand but it's frustrating to have a questions come to mind but be cut off because of the presenter uh, especially when the presenter is rushing to end the talk. Eh? But the questions still remain. How you will deliver your presentation? When delivering your presentation, I'll be giving you some or several points that will help you to remain focused and ensure that everything goes as planned. Number one, you have to pay attention to your language or to the language. Uh, as I said earlier, your presentation should be simple. So, keep it simple. The aim is to communi communicate, not to show off your vocabulary. Never use complex words or phrases uh, that increases the chance of stumbling over a word and losing your train of thought. So, use simple language. 
Next is you have to emphasize the key points. Make sure people realize which are the key points of your study. Repeat them using different phrasing to help the audience remember them. You have also to check the pronunciation of difficult, unusual, or foreign words beforehand. As I said earlier, you have, you have to spell it out um, phonetically. So again, check the pronunciation of difficult, unusual, or foreign words beforehand. Keep it simple, but if you have to use unfamiliar words, write them out phonetically in your notes and practice saying them. This is particularly important when pronouncing, as I said earlier, proper names. Uh, give the definition of words that are unusual or are being used in a particular context. Again, pay attention to language. You have, you have to use simple language. You have to emphasize the key points. And you have to check the pronunciation of difficult, uh, uh, difficult, unusual, or foreign words beforehand. Next is you have to use your voice communi to communicate clearly. Again, use your voice to communicate clearly. Speak loudly enough for everyone in the room to hear you. Projecting your voice may feel uncomfortably loud at first, but if people cannot hear you, they won't try to listen. Again, if people cannot hear you, they won't try to listen. However, moderate your voice if you are taking or talking in front of a microphone. Speak slowly and clearly. Do not rush. Speaking fast makes it harder for people to understand you and signals being nervous. Avoid the use of um, fillers. Linguists refer to utterances such as um, uh, you know, and like as fillers. They called it fillers. This verbal mannerism, these are what we call the fillers. They occur most often during transitions from one idea to another. And if expressed too much, it means that you are distracting an audience or you will be distracting your audience. The better you know your presentation, the better you control these verbal tics or verbal mannerism. Um, vary your voice quality. If you always use the same volume and pitch, for example, the whole uh, presentation is you are loud or soft or in monotone during your presentation, your audience will stop listening. Use a higher pitch and volume in your voice when you begin a new point or when emphasizing the transition to a new point. Next is speakers with accents need to slow down. For us Filipino, those who have what we call a, uh, a dialect pitch or dialect accents, slow down for key points. These are also moments in your presentation to consider using body language, such as hand gesture or leaving the podium to point to a slide uh, to help emphasize key points and another is that you have to use pauses don't be afraid of short periods of silence they will give you a chance to gather your thoughts and your audience an opportunity to think about what you have just said 